Hi folks, thank you again for coming on to Back to Basics for Season 3. Today we're going to speak with Jason Shisek, and we're going to find out what he's all about. But the main topic today we're, we're going to talk about is winning. Now winning is simple, or is it simple? That is the question for today's show. And he makes it so simple about winning. So let's stop talking with me and let's go and speak with Jason and understand what his thought process is when it comes to winning on Back to Basics. I'll see you there. Hi, folks. My name is Girish Bali. Thank you again for coming to Back to Basics. You know, in my intro, I did mention about Jason, didn't I? And he's a really awesome guy. I mean, I've I've talked to him before this pre-call and I try to understand what his whole process is. As I said in my intro, we will find out today who he is, what he is, and why he is, and why he's doing all this. Is it to make people happy or to make people win? So why don't we find out when we get on the call today? Jason, how are you? And thanks for coming to Back to Basics. Oh, Garish, it's so nice to see you again, man. I have just, I can just recognize when I can be, when I would be friends with somebody forever, the moment I meet them. And I think you're one of those guys. So um, I love that question that you posed and I'll, I'll hold off on answering it until you specifically uncover it. But yeah, thank uh, you. It's very thoughtful. Uh, thanks. So th thank you for sharing your time and your audience with me today. Of course, of course. Before we get into the the full topic of uh, today, um, as you know, you must have heard my other shows, but what does back to basic mean to you? Well, for me, you know, it's funny because I'm sort of in, uh, in an entrepreneurial sense, I'm sort of in my second iteration of a similar business, which is an online program with coaching for entrepreneurs. And I won't, there's no need to go into too much depth now, but what I found is this time around, I'm much simpler. I'm much less tactical and detailed and much more big picture and, um, and up for interpretation. And it's immediately been more successful, uh, in every person that I've walked through that. So personally for me, um, you know, I'm a big core values guy. I'm a big mission guy. Well, what is more basic than those things? Right. And so when I when I set out to, to start a business or when I set out to go on a vacation, it's like, what is the one core element, the, the essential nature of the thing that is most important to me? So in business, it was what would I stand literally this question? What would I stand on a mountaintop and beat my chest about and fight over? And so we can talk about what that means. But even if it's uh, where do I want to go for lunch? Like, what do I in my core want to eat right now? You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, uh, complex for it to be meaningful. Totally. Totally. Thank you. Thank you again, Jason, for <clears throat> answering that question. And thank you again for being here. You know, let me ask you this is, is winning the only solution to success or is it winning to your, your wealthness, which is the process that you're going through? I cannot tell you a great story about where I won, Grish. Okay. I can't. I don't have a single story that's awesome that I would sit here and recall for you about a win. Um, I have so many more stories about struggles or hurdles or barriers that had to be broken or struggles where I ultimately failed. Those mm -hmm. are the stories that are meaningful to me. Those are the things that will end up in my you know, literal or figurative book of my life, right? And, and, and so winning is great. And I think it's simple. Our, our, our logo is when our, our, our motto is winning is simple. Um, but I don't think it's, I don't think winning is what people want. I think one, people want to feel like winners and I think people want to be happy in their relationships and the work that they do. But I don't think most people that have thought about their own motivations actually are driven by winning as much as they think. Hmm. But, but what is the, the value or the measurement of, winning yeah. because some people when they say winning they think money right and they think well yesterday was better than today i mean what yeah. what is your your measurement okay so for me i can start for with me and then kind of work it back from there so for me winning is only doing work that gives me energy and energizes my my mission on the world number oh, one yeah. i spend my time did i lose you for a second no no 
Oh, okay. There was something that came up. Um, yeah, for me, winning is is only for professionally is spending my time doing only those things that give me energy and help the most amount of people. Uh, winning is being able to spend time with my family, being able to uh, take care of my myself, my body, my social life before I schedule myself for work, which is something that I do. I typically work a twenty hour work week, um, and I go to the gym four times a week. I go on a solo mission alone once a week. I spend uh, seventy two hours a week dedicated to my my wife and daughter. Um, outside of sleep. Um, and, and that's winning. I, I think I tell people I retired in 2018 because that's when I stopped doing things for work that I didn't want to do for money. Um, and I don't do that. And I haven't done it since. Um, now for other people, I think other people keep scoring a million different ways. The best of them know what that yeah. score is. Like I know somebody who has a KPI for how many days a year he goes surfing. But for a lot of people, I actually don't think that they have the language or have given the thought to what winning would be for them. And so what they do is they join the school of fish that's all going after money or prestige or something like that. But th thank you again for that. But, you know, the thing is that do you think there is a different life of process? Let me step back and make make you understand here. Yep. Do you think before I became an entrepreneur or before I became a professionalist? Do you think that we we are trying to make extra money out of that to make that winning goal? Or do you think that we're winning the work life balance? I mean, what do you what do you think? I mean, do you think the age factor comes in play or the work balance comes in play or the career? I mean, I think it all does. But I think if we go back to basics for a second, if you yeah. can imagine somebody 500 years ago with no technology and, and let's just say a place where there's no money. If you can right. imagine that person having a healthy relationship with his wife, close relationships with his friends and family, enjoying the work that he does every single day, having health and having a strong relationship with himself and with his children um, and being able to do the things that he wants to do, being able to go to see another place or being able to try a new thing or try a certain food or I don't know, have a nice horse. I don't know in the metaphor, that person is successful. Um, and it doesn't matter. Um, I think ultimately success is, is so much, uh, defined by you. Uh, I was reading a book yesterday that said desire is the contract you make with yourself to suffer until you get what you want. And so that's what it is. Desire is suffering. And so you can either continue to desire things and, and suffer intentionally, but it must serve a purpose. It must serve you getting to that goal that you truly want. Yeah. But uh, thank you again, Jason. You know, between you and me, I think we agree that the greatest success is your family and your friends and and yourself, obviously, right? But some people will not agree with that. So is that wrong how we think? Or is that how we structured our life? What do you think of that? No, absolutely not. I think uh, I, I can speak to that very easily. Um, all of the things that that you or I measure our own success by are equally valid to anything that anybody else measures their success by. However, what I will say is how many people have you met, Garish, who have a lot of money, a lot of status, a lot of material things, and are incredibly unhappy? And that's where I would say, if we are looking at someone outward other than ourselves, if you look inside and the thing inside you want is a really nice car, which I have, then great. And I enjoy it every single time I drive it. And if you look really deep inside and you say, I want the admiration of my peers, great. You know, to some level, I, I think that my peers respect me. That's awesome. If you look deep inside and you say, I want to make a lot of money so that I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. Great. I've made a lot of money. And those things are true. And I think those things are valid. But what I would argue is it's not the money. Money is really just the, the exchange of time and wealth and, and effort, right? Uh, and so it's really not the money, uh, it's really the other thing. And so if you're an actor, it's an Academy Award. It's the respect of your peers and the, and the world. If you're, if you're an automotive maker, it's you know, the top ratings or the fastest time around the Nuremberg ring. If you're, um, you know, if you're uh, a, an artist, it's, it's the prestige of being in a certain museum or something. Now, mm -hmm. money comes with everything I just said, but I think it's folly to think that that money is somehow going to give you that thing because there are people out there who sell Xerox copies of bad art that they didn't make that make money. And there are people out there that can resell a used car by tricking somebody on a parking lot and they make money, but they're not happy when they go home, right? The people yeah. that are happy are the one who have found the, the, um, that have found the, the outlet of 
having anything that they could call their life's work, even if that's just family. But mm. uh, I think I think it's um, I think it's short sighted to think money is the goal for anyone, even somebody that's um, even somebody that's, let's say, a, a stock, a, a hedge fund manager that makes 20 billion dollars over the course of their life right mm -hmm. this person that is by definition just making ex uh, trades to create arbitrage opportunities and capitalize on margins and things like that that person would even tell you i did it for generational wealth for my family i did it so that i could buy a yacht i did it so that i could buy an island i did it so i could get a beautiful husband or wife right these are the things that they actually wanted and that they went out there and did it or i did it for the respect of my peers and i love winning games like that's mm -hmm. that's valid too um, yeah. I certainly wouldn't attribute somebody else's, you know, value structure, but I do think that anybody who actually believes it's the money that's the thing is probably not in charge of a lot of it. Mm. Jason, thank you again for that. You know, let, let me ask you this. If I want to get to know Jason better, okay. right, which means that I want to understand that if you're a good friend or not, right? So that's a gain for me and that's a win for me. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I want to talk to someone who has extra money and good money and he's living his life the way it is let's say a rich guy okay i will talk to him and be friends with him to understand how do he make that money right isn't that a win situation also don't you think that there's plus and minuses in both different ways i mean what are your thoughts on that I think you absolutely should seek guidance from people that are good at what you do or what you want to do, right? Um, I have a friend, Scott Ferguson. He always says plus equals minus. You should have mentors in your life that have gone places you have not yet gone and you want to go. You should have people in your life that you regularly meet with that you think of as peers, like a mastermind group or a professional organization. And you should have mentees that are further behind you on the path that you're helping forward. You get something from all of those things. That is absolutely a win. Um, and I would even argue that there are people that I have learned immensely from that I don't necessarily align with ethically or from core values. Um, but I don't think that, um, I mean, listen, uh, there are people out there listening to R. Kelly songs. There are people out there watching Woody Allen movies. There's people out there that will say that, you know, Bill Cosby was the greatest comedian to ever live. You, you can throw away the, the bathwater without throwing away part of the baby you know mm. yeah but thank you thank you again jason for for that you know when when people they start an entrepreneur life mm -hmm. okay it is a long struggling life we know that i mean that's just how it is right but how do you plan it to be successful how do you plan that you are not going to fail or we should fail so that we can win better what are your thoughts on that I think an entrepreneur, what they're really doing is they've become investors. Um, and the way that Warren Buffett will invest in Coca-Cola for many, many years, because he believes strongly in not just the brand, not just the what it does or people's demand for it, but also that it will continue to grow over time. I think entrepreneurs are betting on themselves, having as much information as anybody can have on themselves uh, and saying, I believe that it's worth this risk to invest in myself. And I believe that that will grow over time. Um, the number one thing that I see in, in the folks that I work with that help, that hurts them is in order to get from point zero to point one, Garish, and you know this, we have to break through brick walls. We have to wear all the different hats in our business. We have to be everything to everybody. And it means we're working like crazy to create something where nothing was. This is the beauty of being an entrepreneur. But very quickly, once you now have a business, you become trapped. You, that passion becomes a prison, right? You become trapped because you're the only one who knows how to break down the walls. You're the only one that the hats fit correctly. And so what I try to do is I try to take what you think of as magic between your ears, and I try to help ask you questions that will allow you to codify that magic into science. Now we can take that science and recreate it with a team. We can recreate it with systems and scaling. Um, and now you can make a much bigger impact on the world, and you don't have to be carrying the sledgehammer and wearing all the different hats. But mm -hmm. that is uh, the way to reliably grow a business that isn't going to fail. The number one question, the first question I ask any entrepreneur I talk to is what happens if you get hit by a truck tomorrow? What mm -hmm. happens to your business? Mm -hmm. Is your family safe? Is your business safe? Does it go on without you? Or is it just you? Because if it's just you, well, that's not a business. That's your self-employed. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again for that. There, there's a reason why I asked this question. There, were, there was an article that I read a couple of days ago, and they said they're in this journey for a long time, and they're successful. 
But now that passion of that entrepreneurship has become a job because it's not a passion no more. Yes. Because they, they realize that they're just going in a circle in a rut. They don't know how to come out of it and enjoy that process. So is that a failure for them or is that a win for them? I wouldn't say it's a failure as it's definitely not a win. Uh, what I would say is it's unfortunate because mm. I think that person got on a ride without really understanding where it was going. Um, I used to work in a bank, the biggest bank in the world. And I had a, a job that was a very good starting job. I was a financial analyst. Um, and I remember vividly one particular meeting, I was sitting next to my boss, his boss, his boss's boss, and his boss's boss's boss and an entrepreneur, but it's not part of the story. And I remember, I know that guy, I could say his name, I know where he lived town-wise. He got up before me, he drove further than me, he did harder work, more difficult work every single day. He left after me and drove home later than me. And he had kids and a family. I don't care what his house looks like, I don't care what the bank account looks like, I don't care what the car looks like, I don't want his life. And so that was a ride that I just could tell from the beginning I didn't want to go on. By the way, I would have had to be incredibly skilled and lucky to have ever gotten to that seat. That guy was very high up. And I was just like, I don't know, that's not the life that I want. There's, there's all sorts of things now. I don't know when it happened exactly, but within the last five or 10 years, I just have seen things that, you know, I turned to my wife one day, uh, I was on Instagram and I saw Ben Affleck standing there, you know the picture. He's holding a Starbucks and he just looks like crap. And by the way, if, if he ever hears this, man, I got so much respect for you. I, I hope you're doing well. But I looked at that picture and I go, oh my God, I'm happier than Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. And that was like an actual thing for me where I was like, not that Ben Affleck's even a matter in my life, but I was just like, oh. Yeah, that was a ride that maybe hasn't ended up well for him currently. But the thing is that everyone has their own journey, right? I mean, uh, you, you can't compare other people's life. Yes, you can say that my life is better than the other uh, because that will make you feel better. But should we compare other businesses with your business? Do you no, think? and you, certain, you certainly can if you'd like. Uh, but I guess the point I'm getting at is when someone is clearly unhappy, to That's say right. like, oh, the thing that I previously thought would make me happy clearly yeah. isn't. And I think there's just, you know, uh, just myriad references that we could come up with here today if we tried of people where they, they're at the top of the mountain and they're not happy. Meanwhile, I go to Thailand and I bump into a monk who, you know, barely even eats food or speaks. And he seems to be just the happiest person I've ever met. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, Jason, for that. You know, there's a, uh, a section or a, uh, um, uh, a section that we have started on survey on on season three for back to basics which is a rapid fire round and we wanted to go and start some words and some sentences whatever comes in your mind just let me know what do you think uh just let me know whenever you're ready i'm ready awesome uh the first word is simple not complex mission Impact is the word that comes to mind. Value. Give what they can't get for themselves. Winning. Choosing the right game. Energy. Free if you choose the right game. <laughs> Work-life balance. Um, redundant because I think my work and my life are completely integrated and I don't know if that's me being cute or whatever, but I, redundant. Okay. Desire. I have to say the quote, which is <laughs> desire is the contract we make with ourselves to suffer until we get what we want. Mentors. Just completely invaluable back to basics asking yourself the questions that you have the answers to but have not yet asked entrepreneurship seeing the world as it could be and can't help but take action and the last one is Jason. 
Shepard. Okay. Thank you so much, Jason, for playing the, the, the rapid fire. You know, I just wanted to understand how, how you think when it comes to these words. And some people, they come up with different, different uh, words and different meanings to it. So thank you again for playing that. You know, is there a book that you're reading that you're really enjoying and it makes your impact of your life? I can't I wait. You, I, tell you. you know, I think you and I discussed this during the pre-call, but what about today? It's probably different because it, I just started reading it like a day or two ago. Uh, it's the, the Almanac of Naval uh, Ravikant is amazing. It's amazing. And the book I probably would have mentioned would be Essentialism to squeeze into. Essentialism is also just absolutely amazing, um, which is why we would talk about it back to basics, Essentialism. Uh, but man, I started the, the, um, the Almanac of Naval Ravikant, and it is it will be one of the top 10 books of my life, I bet. I will reread this multiple times. Wow. Jason, yeah. thank you again for that. You know, can you explain to people who you are and what you do, if you don't mind. And I, I want people to understand that you have an amazing uh, persona, the way you pr product your own empire. So can you explain that if you don't mind? Sure. Um, so I don't know if you want to hear all of it, but I um, I grew up in a behavior disorder school when I was young, um, which allowed me to study at my own pace, but it also kind of took me out of the normal loop of conditioning folks to fit in in school. Um, I went, I had what I call spirit of the puppy. I was very high energy. I loved to learn what I was interested in. I didn't sit very well in class. Uh, I have ADD, with, which is what I call entrepreneur's disease. Um, and so I went to the military. I didn't have direction. Um, so went to the military, spent four years in the military. I learned how to work hard and I learned the value of a hard working team that is really, really like entwined and integrated. Um, and what I do since then, I went to school for finance. I got a job as a banker. And at the same time, I started a small tribal CrossFit gym in Chicago that still runs to this day. Um, and I just fell in love with helping change people's lives. For many years, I thought that I fell in love with helping people change their fitness lives. Um, but about 2018, I started to do some coaching of entrepreneurs at first just in fitness. Um, and what I found was that those are my people. I've never gotten off of a call, Garish, with another entrepreneur with less energy than I got on that call. Um, and so I've devoted my life uh, to helping entrepreneurs to scale their impact on the world. That is the, I call it making business babies. Because the two things that I'm most proud of in this world, aside from my family, are the five or 10 babies that are walking around because their parents were introduced within my gym. And then separately, the business babies that we've created, the people that I've introduced uh, in my time as a coach and the people that I've helped to build businesses that are now thriving and making an impact out there on the world. And so a great entrepreneur is able to have their business grow while they're asleep. A great entrepreneurial coach can have many businesses yeah. growing while they and their owners are asleep. And that's my goal. Wow, Jason, thank you again for that. Because, you know, you and I chatted uh, on the pre-call and we talk briefly of what you do. Uh, but you know, we, I've known, it seems like for those 20 minutes that I've spoken to you, it seems like I've known you for years <laughs> and, and, and the way you conduct your business and the way you conduct of speaking with people and bringing people up, I think you're a person to get in touch with for sure. So thank you again, Jason, for, for coming here and supporting my small podcast that I have here. Garish, I'm I'm in incredibly grateful for you for having me on. I think you're a fantastic host. I think uh, you're a really uh, a very um, uh, talented and and uh, charming and, and thoughtful guy. Um, I am certain that we will stay in contact after this conversation. Yeah, of course. Thank you, thank you again, Jason, for for being here, and uh, we'll chat again for sure. Thank you so much, Garish. I appreciate your time. Thank you. So guys, we spoke with Jason today and we talked about the entrepreneurship life and we've talked about the winnings and the losings. Is there such thing as losings? Well, how about you become the judge of that and, and make that decision for yourself after what you have heard today from Jason and I? Basically, Jason, not really me. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'm the winner out of this whole thing, but you'll never know, will you? Now, as usual, as always, there is a quote of the day from Back to Basics, and hopefully my guests will like that quote. The quote is, a champion is afraid of losing. 
everyone else is afraid of winning. Now, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Being afraid or being a champion, that's up to you to decide. Now, there's one thing that we always say at the end of the episode. Everything in life goes back to basics, and that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care, God bless, and see you next time on Back to Basics. I think it was great. I think I had a great time. Oh, good. That's great. I felt like I might have... You caught me in a little bit of an Eastern mode where like, I felt like I might have been giving you answers you didn't expect me to give you. I didn't want to. Hi guys, thank you again for tuning in to Back to Basics and listening to the, the excellent uh, episode that we had today with our guest. You know, with your love and support, we do need you to at least rate our show, review our show, because it does make us stronger day by day, week by week, as I usually say on my episodes. And there are three things in this episode that it makes a hit for me, which is the content, the guest, and definitely the host. So guys, take care. God bless. And remember, everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care. God bless. And see you next time on Back to Basics.